okay moving on let us look at how uh, the same system is used in compressible flow we have so far studied only the incompressible flow that is what we have studied we know from our previous uh, lectures that there is no hard and fast number at which the flow becomes compressible but typically we say that at Mach number 0.3 or lower you can assume that the flow is incompressible without much error the errors would be only around 4 to 5 percent at Mach number 0.3 beyond Mach number 0.3 the errors become in increasing and when you go to Mach number 0 0.7, 0 0.8 etc error becomes very high. Okay. So, if when you look at incompressible flow then you can apply this version of Bernoulli's principle and if you assume that the altitude is not changing if you are in level flight then the two heights are same. So, you can simply say that at a stagnation pressure the velocity is 0. So, the difference in stagnation pressure divided by rho into 2 is the velocity. So, this is the principle used by the pitostatic tube in incompressible flow which we have studied so far. Now, we move on to the compressible flow and that too in subsonic and supersonic. So, in, in uh, compressible flow the fluid is brought to rest. So, therefore, the kinetic energy of the flow is completely absorbed to increase the stagnation pressure. So, if you have a pitostatic tube like this there is going to be a stagnation pressure right in the front. Okay. So, this conversion of energy takes place at the stagnation point. So, you get stagnation pressure there. So, the fluid regime can be incompressible, subsonic, compressible or supersonic it does not matter the working principle is the same. But the difference is that now you are using you are assuming you are assuming that it is isentropic remember now last time when I spoke to you I asked you to put on model a proof that when you bring fluid to rest it is actually isentropic no one has so far reported that no one has been able to put that answer. So, it still it is open I would like you to prove that in a standard pitostatic tube when the flow is decelerated and compressed from the free stream state that process is isentropic we have to prove it. So, what we do is the same thing p stagnation and p static are used to measure. Okay. So, it is the same principle, but the only difference is in how do we get the correlation between the stagnation and static pressure in the in case of compressible flow the relationship is not simply root of 2 into delta p upon density you have this isentropic compression formula which is applicable. So, the ratio of p stagnation by p static is 1 plus gamma minus 1 m infinity square gamma upper gamma minus 1 ok this we all know. So, using this you can get the velocity formula a bit a bit different from what was there in the previous one. So, this kind of a compensation is has to be brought into the system when we are looking at a compressible flow ok right. Now, let us look at supersonic flow in uh, supersonic flow what will happen is that the presence of this tube is going to create a shock. Now, in the next capsule we are going to look at shock waves we are going to look at uh, this in more detail. So, I had a choice either to discuss this portion at that point of time but I thought let me just complete it here. So, that it is there at one place and we do not have to revisit that place once again. So, right now you have to assume what I am saying in the next uh, session or in the next capsule I am going to elaborate this into more detail. So, essentially what happens in a supersonic flow is that there is going to be formation of something called as a shock wave and this shock wave if it is a blunt shaped body like this or a fairly rounded body like this not very sharp this shock is going to be a detached shock it will be located ahead of the body ok. And if you bring in a pitot tube there is going to be a detached shock in the front. So, the probe stagnation pressure is going to be more than that of the free stream because behind a shock there is going to be an increase in the pressure because of the shock this is the phenomena of shock wave this is the feature of a shock wave that the stagnation pressure increases. So, that means the reading will be wrong because now you are not reading the free stream pressure you are reading the pressure 
behind the shock which will happen because the flow is supersonic. So, there is a Rayleigh Pitot formula for supersonic flows through which we can get this expression ok. We are not going to either prove it or now we are going to derive this expression that is not a part of this course on introduction to flight. Just I want to tell you that the ratio of pressures is different in incompressible flow, compressible flow without shocks and compressible flow in supersonic flow ok. So, let us see now uh, you do not believe me I would like to show you a shock, but before that there is a question yes. Total pressure what happens to that it remains constant hmm? ok. So, what will happen to the readings? Yeah, you are right, you are right, you are right. Static pressure is going to increase. So, the pressure that the probe is facing will be different from what is the free stream pressure and that will lead to the errors. So, thank you for correcting my mistake, you are right. Ok, let us see, let us see a small video that shows the creation of a shock. In the you can see as the flow becomes tonic, there is this very beautiful pattern form and hence the pressure sense by the tube is going to be behind this shock, it is not going to be the same. So, there is a shock right in the front, there is a shock here, here, there is a shock here also. what you get is not the correct pressure. So, these are some lines which tell you about the ratio in the pressure uh, as a function of free stream Mach number. The first one shows only when the Mach number is from 1 to 4, it is a zoomed in figure of this one which shows from Mach number 1 to 10. So, you can see that there is a substantial drop, the pressure will be only 10 percent of the free stream if the Mach number is uh, approximately 2.7 or 2.6. And if you go to Mach number 10, it is going to be very, very small as a ratio, ok. So, this is a uh, Pitot, uh, Rayleigh Pitot formula which is coded in the Pitot's tube. But I want you to see, this is the kind of shape that you will see for a Pitot static tube used on all aircraft which go faster than speed of sound. In supersonic flow, so there will be a central symmetry axis and there will be a bulbous nose in the front and there will also be something on the back. Okay. So, the question is why are the pitot tubes shaped like this in case of supersonic aircraft ok. The answer is that we need to compensate the position error or the error that is coming because of its position and also because of the presence of shocks. So, let us see how it works. So, basically what is position error? The position error is that the static pressure locally is not same as ambient and the difference between them is called as the loss in static pressure which leads to an error called as a position error. So, that means you have to give some kind of a aerodynamic compensation for the shape of the pitot static tube or the pitot tube so that it reads the correct value of pressure. So, this is that particular uh, compensation region which is in the front. And on the back you also have another conical area which is again meant for the same kind of compensation. But now there is another interesting thing, uh, what you can do is you can mount some sensors in this area and in this area ok. And the difference in the pressure that you record in the upper and the lower surface, you can use it for finding the angle of attack of the aircraft or the angle at which the probe is mounted to the flow. So, this particular uh, figure has been borrowed from a paper which has been published by a faculty member from a university in Pakistan, uh, Professor Masood. He has done some CFD investigations and uh, uh, we have uh, borrowed this particular figure from uh, the paper ok. The journal is called as the engineering applications of computational fluid mechanics. And uh, as you can see in the next slide, this is the mesh that was created 
across the pitostatic tube and the angle of attack sensors mounted they measure the static difference between the top and the bottom surfaces and with that so as the angle of attack increases then there is an increase in the static pressure difference because of the angle of the pitostatic tube and that difference in static pressure can be communicated to the pilot as an uh, indication of at what angle of attack the pitot tube is facing. Now this has to be corrected to the aircraft angle of attack that is a different matter but you can use the pitot static tube to calculate at what angle the aircraft is pointing to the free strain. This is not possible in subsonic flow because in subsonic flow you do not get these kind of differences in static pressures at, at an change in the angle. It happens only in the uh, supersonic flow because of the presence of the shock waves. So there will be a shock wave there at the corner. Hmm. So this kind of a pitot-static tube or this kind of a system is very commonly employed in supersonic fighter aircraft. So on the Moodle page, you can actually show us the photographs of such tubes for some typical fighter aircraft which fly at very high speeds just to increase our appreciation. Okay, so now uh, the last thing I want to talk to you as far as the pneumatic measurement is concerned is the air data module. The air data module is essentially a system by which the pressure information measured by pneumatic instruments is converted into digital data. So that the onboard systems like the fly wire system or any other system are able to uh, use it ok. So basically what does ADM do? ADM converts the air pressure from a pitot tube or a static port into numerical information ok and this particular system is then connected together electronically by a data bus. So as you can see in this example there are three pitot tubes two are on the left hand side pitot tube number one and three and one on the right hand side. And you have three static ports on the left and three on the right and you will notice that all of them are coupled together so that the average value can be taken. So for on each of these particular probes you have an ADM system attached which converts the pneumatic reading into digital reading and then it sends it to the display and navigation system in the center ok. But you can notice that there is a standby airspeed indicator and a standby altimeter which may not be connected to this particular system. This is just a backup system because in case electronics fail then the manual backup for the pilot is needed for these two primary instruments. Okay. So it is a very flexible system, it is a modular system you can plug in and use it and this is very commonly found in most modern aircraft. Uh, because most modern aircraft are using electronic systems uh, for the uh, display and navigation of the aircraft okay. right. So yes that is a very good question I was waiting for it to be asked at that time but sometimes processing takes time. So he has been processing the information and now he comes up with this question can somebody answer this question okay very good. I am happy to see that MTech students also think a lot, yes. Yes, what is it? Do you have any thought about it? So can anybody else uh, try to answer this question? Only one tube is blocked, why not the other? So for this I would request you to actually spend some time and read the reports which are given online. There are crash investigation reports about this aircraft. As I said, this is one of the first time when we had such a fatal failure of an aircraft because of the blockages. So no, don't, no need to guess your answer right now. We are not playing a guessing game. We will, we will use Moodle page to educate ourselves. So I would encourage people to first of all, if somebody can download the crash report and upload it on the Moodle page, that will be great. If someone can go through the main observations and then answer this question, if one of the static ports is blocked, why should the whole system fail? Do you have a question? I don't 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, guesses are allowed but not welcome because see, there are times when we want people to guess because an intelligent guess is also very interesting. But you know, we will see simply, we will simply keep guessing this may have happened. Instead of that, this is a historical fact. Data is available. Let us read it and let us educate ourselves. Okay. 